And welcome, fans of Flip Clocks. Kind of right in the middle of messing around in my studio here, and I thought I'd include you in this uh, little escapade I got myself into. So I spoke with someone online about some clocks that they wanted me to work on, and it's it's a conglomeration of clocks, as you can see. I have three what uh, look like they're all the same, but they're designated different models because uh, the one that's open here is a Copal 225 which is the same as our 225 except that this one is it runs on um, 50 Hertz and up to 260 volts so this is a European model this one right here is European so you have to, now the good thing about working on these kind of clocks in the United States is if I plug this into our mains here our main current here in the uh, United States if I plug it into the wall nothing's going to happen uh, and nothing bad's going to happen if the motor gets going it'll run but it'll run at a slow speed now on the, in the reverse if someone in 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 a European country or someplace where they're running 220 volts plugs in one of a clock from North America it's going to destroy the motor so Anyway, I got ahead of myself because I kind of promised the person I was going to um, show a lot of the stuff of what I what I was doing in a video. So the first thing, I went ahead and put a new bulb in there, and we're going to take we're going to take a quick look at the at the operation of this clock. It's missing some numbers and some other things, but we're just going to take a quick look. Now, what I'm using here to power this is a um, Ken's Clock Clinic converter. It uh, will output about 230 volts at 50 hertz, 50 or 60 hertz. I'm, you set the, I've got it set to, to 50 hertz. So this is going to be what we need. Now the way this works is this uh, converter is the way it works is it actually takes your voltage and converts it to DC and then they turn around and convert it to uh, to AC of whatever you're trying to reach it's pretty straightforward so you see we've got if you can't see that I don't want to cause a spark here they don't have those insulated so we've got the, the bulb lit Now what you're noticing there, what you may be noticing is that that bulb is flickering. And that's a, a property of the uh, the speed at which I'm, the uh, the camera is taking the the video. Because in, in, in my eyes right now, that's not flickering at all. But because of the frames per second of my video, you're seeing the flicker. With neon glow bulbs, only the negative side is going to be lit at any one time. And of course, this is alternating current. So that's bouncing back and forth. That's what you see, I would think. Uh, of course, to my naked eye, I don't see that. Okay, so here's our motor. That's a real good sign. So it should have started up right away. So that just needs to be cleaned. This is going to get going really easy. I'm assuming that the gears inside here work so I need to double check that gotta be careful there I'm gonna set it off if I don't watch that okay so now what makes this whole thing exciting is that we've got several clocks now this one is a Japanese version awesome looking clock I, I think we should whiten this clock to show off that red really good there and this is a model what they call 226 and you'll see that it's 100 volt, um, 50 hertz. Now that's interesting. In Japan, they have 50 and 60 hertz. In this case, it is a 50 hertz and 100 volts. So you could run this in the United States. You're going to be overpowering it, but it will run. They say it shortens the lifespan of the clock if you do that. I don't know. Now this one, the person I'm working with wants that to be able to run in the United States. So we've got this one. Now, I'd be darned if I didn't see this on eBay. I swear I did see that on eBay. So I want to talk to this, the owner of these clocks 
and see about letting me get this off here. Now that's painted on there, but I've got a deep dark secret of how to get that off. At least I hope I, I know how to get it off. I'm not going to sand it, but this is the 225 at a 115 volts nominally there. Uh, my current runs at 120, 121 here for some reason, but uh, that's kind of standard, anywhere between 110 and 120. So I'm just going to take them, think about taking the motor here and put it in this clock so that this can be used in the United States safely. And let's see, oh yeah, the owner said that there's some tiles missing here, and I think I can go ahead and replace those. There's some missing tiles, but they came in a bag around here somewhere. But I think I can actually replace those right out of hand. So, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean this motor up. We're going to get this 220 volt clock working. You see, we already got this situation. I like preserving what came with the clock. So, the only thing I replaced is this. I had this one, it's just a plastic sleeve that goes over top there. I just like this blue. It's it's usually fiberglass, impregnated fiberglass, these little sheaths. I just never seen one that was blue before, so I wanted to preserve that. And I also preserved this tube. I, I preserved as much as I could. So you see, this just goes over top of this mess. I have to work that to get that on there. And then it'll go into the clock like so. And it would be right, right where we need it. Okay, so I've got some work to do. I just wanted to give this video just to kind of show you where I'm at. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do, like I said, I was going to try to white either. I'm either going to white in this case or talk to the person about switching this over here because this would just look wonderful over here. Yeah, and that would actually be a good idea because then, then this would match because I'm going to use this motor into that clock. So this label would be correct and that it would be reading what it's actually doing. In this case, I'm not sure what you what we do with this. We're going to end up with a with an extra case. Uh, I thought this was neat. It's Copal, but then there's this Toshiba label on there, and they've got got it uh, dated 1973. Pretty cool. I'm not sure what that's all about. Why why Toshiba branded this like that, but they did. Okay, and uh, anyway, this thing won't keep running. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a. Uh, this is take two. Of what I started, and uh, it's, I'm, yep, boy, I'm fumbling around. So this is what I usually do when I'm doing a video. A lot of this hemming and hawing and stuff, and that's what the editing software is for. This is raw video. I'm not gonna edit it in any way so you're going to get a lot of bangs and bumps and I apologize for that it's probably going to be hard to watch but if you're really into flip clocks maybe you'll you'll muddle through it the owner I have to come up with a name for this owner so I don't have to keep saying owner had a, had a situation with the clock where it was dropped and these tiles popped right out so these are the actual tiles we had discussed online on the communications through email about taking tiles from here to replace the tiles that were missing from here but I believe it was just a, a weird force that jolted these out the tabs are still in place speaking of these tabs sometimes on flip clock fans will will talk to each other about trying to get some replacement tabs and the way I like to describe these tabs so if you said I needed this usually it's only one one or two tabs the way we describe it, I would recommend describing it, is like this is the, if you said, I, need, I really need this one, it's the top of 35 and the bottom of 36. So that's how you describe it. You actually give both, top of 35, bottom of 36. So let's just, there. So I'm looking at this to see, should I go ahead and replace, replace the tiles with tiles from this clock, or are these okay? I think they're okay. And what I'm looking for is to see it, where they bent when they came out. And how they came out, I don't know, without getting bent. So we've got the bulb all wrapped up. 
and going on. So nothing here is going to get me, I don't think. What I'm trying to see... What I'm trying to see is if this motor's working. We know it's spinning, but I don't know if the motor's working yet. That could be a problem. I don't have these tightened down, so I'm I've got to keep it up against the gears to see if we're seeing any mo movement of this. I think I am. When it flips from the top of this 37, we'll know. Or when it moves a little bit farther on that. So that silver thing there, I call them tines. They hold back the tiles. You see somebody's clean these tiles or lubricated them. We'll go through and wipe, wipe those down. That's no problem. That's an overspray of oil. No problems there. I am seeing that moving. You know, in the patents, they call these arresting fingers. I always thought that was funny when you read some of the early patents. Those little things right there that hold the numbers back are called arresting fingers. I don't know if your eyes have been able to catch it, but that arresting finger is losing its grip on number 37. So this clock motor is working. Again, you're seeing the, the rotor move here, but I'm talking about the gearbox inside of here. Yeah, definitely. It's getting ready to flip. I don't want it to flip. Stop flipping. Pull that off there. I don't want it to flip because I want to go ahead and replace this, the bottom of this 37. I'm going to show you how to do this. Gosh, I hate doing this live on camera because what if I screw it up? Okay, so I've got to get this in here like that. And as you notice, this doesn't fit. So what, what you've got to do is you've got to take that tile and bend it like this to shorten to shorten it so that it fits in there and I've done this several times on a lot of different clocks and I think the best procedure is to get it in there in one you gotta you gotta hold it steady now you gotta give me a, some slack here not only am I doing this I'm trying to do this on camera too and I apologize this being the raw video you're gonna hear a lot of breathing and stuff like that. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so you see, you see you caught that. That's actually pretty good. So now that's top of 36. We need the bottom of 36, which is here. Again, only a true flip clock fan can appreciate videos like this. Very boring for your general public, I would guess. Because we're not a very big YouTube channel. I don't have to tell you that. That's no secret. But it's all right. There's people who like this stuff. I'm never going to be a big YouTuber. We all know that, and I'm okay with that. That's I'm not one thing. Uh, uh, sometimes people, I had one person, they wanted me to do this on video form, and they was interested in paying me for it. Well, generally, I don't I don't like to be paid for it because I'm not a business. I know it sounds weird, but I'm not interested in getting to all that. But they feel, felt like I should just do it for free because of my YouTube channel. Like, like, I was getting, like I'm getting millions of dollars for these videos. I make no money doing this. I make no money doing this. I actually spend a lot of money doing this. But I love doing this. So I do this because I like it. Now, I'll just tell you, the I'm not fishing for the... For business for people to send me their clocks this just is what it is but the the actual person who sent me this clock I will tell you is a very generous person and I'm much appreciated so um, whenever I do this and again I don't take these on frequently because I'll only take on one at a time but the stipulation is uh, you realize that uh, there's no guarantee that I'm gonna fix your clock but also you have to ship it to me and you have to pay for me to ship it back to you. Now again, I'm not asking for business because I've got a real job outside of this. But that's just the thing. Okay, so anyway, that worked great. So we didn't have to cannibalize this clock. This clock's fine and there was no reason not to use those. If I thought this would be better, I would have done that. Now you've seen many videos. I've got many videos on how to fix this. You can use alcohol in here. I've gone back and forth on what's the best there. You can use... Um, 
WD-40. Now I like WD-40 these days. It's going to do less damage to the Whirligig tape. Uh, this thing here. Alcohol can sometimes wipe that out. So this is in good shape. We're going to we just replace the bulb. Get that in there. And it's going to do good. I used a, a A1A bulb. It's designated A1A. And uh, I used the resistor that was already in place, which is a 150 ohm resistor. So that's going to work. That's going to work good to light those numbers up. So, all right. So the next thing is this is the Japanese clock. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to get in here and see about getting this motor in the OK clock into here to turn this one into a United States running clock. That's what we're going to do. This will be U.S. And this one will go back to being a, will remain uh, for 220 volts, if you can see that. 50 hertz, 220 volts. So this one will remain for European. Put that down later. Got to get this back. That's the shroud that protects it. Got to watch these screws. These screws. All right. So, yeah, y'all might be interested in this. And because this is raw video, I'm not, I'm not trying as hard to control my um, southern accent. I'm not ashamed of my southern accent. You know, a lot of people consider people from where I'm at northern, in fact. But we're in the southern part of the state, and my family came from eastern Kentucky. So, and and uh, the majority of the people, the people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I don't have a real strong southern accent. I mean, they don't hear it. But I, I try, I've, uh, I'm not ashamed of it, like I said, but a lot of people hear the way I talk online and they think I'm a hick or a hillbilly or something like that or a redneck, whatever derogatory term they want to use. Now this, this clock needs to have its the screw put back there to keep it steady. And again, I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining about being called a hick. I'm, it doesn't hurt my my little feelings. Trust me. I'm 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 a, I'm not a youngster. Oh boy. I'm not an old man yet. I'm just right there. I, I I'm old enough not to give a. I'm old enough not to give a. Shit. All right. Now, this like I said, it's a hundred. 100 volts so we're going to probably take this motor like i said but i actually have a converter for this believe it or not let's dig this out okay the, th the things you amass as a, a flip clock nut this is a converter and as as you can see, it says a Faripa Koroku. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. That's actually how you say flip clock in Japanese, by the way. Faripa Koroku. And I'm not joking. You know, a lot of people. Uh, I I'm a fan of Japanese. Uh, you know, this a lot of people have a lot of I don't know prejudice or whatever because of history and whatnot. But these are. Your modern Japanese folks, they're, uh, they're interesting to me, especially the young people. They are just wacky. Anyway, <laughs> that's how you say it. You say it for Ripa Kuroku. And, and uh, it sounds like you're making fun of somebody when you say that. But you're, that's, that's how they speak because they don't use the same kind of language as these, the sounds. They don't use the same sounds. So they, when they produce it into, well, we do that with, with, uh, with foreign sounding words. We'll take it and turn it into stuff and that sounds like something we can say without hurting ourselves. So I don't know what any of that says. But anyway, what this does is this, this will transform the current. Uh, it says uh, from from 110 to where it says it's going to output at 100 volts. Obviously. I mean, you can just see. No, <laughs> I don't know what that says. But that's what it does. I've measured it. So if I wanted to power this, uh, I could power it straight up, and I'm going to do it. That's because we're just bold. 
there's no reason not to do that for a short amount of time. It's not going to hurt anything. I know you think I'm nuts, but uh, it'll overpower the clock a little bit, but it's not going to kill it. Watch it explode. All right. You watching? Man, I don't think I want to do that, you know? This guy's trusting me with his clock, so let's just do it. We're going to go ahead and take this. We're going to take our 120 volts here and and take it down to 100 volts. So that's what this does. With all that, And like, like you see, this was not marketed for United States. This was marketed to Japanese. For, for Japanese who were coming to United States so that they didn't screw up all their equipment. Like I said, for sensitive equipment like computers and stuff, you really don't want to, if you've got a Japanese computer, you really don't want to run it at 120 volts. You will screw up those sensitive internals. With these kind of things, these are just straightforward clock. You're not going to screw it up for short term. All right. Raw video. I wonder what that smell was. I had <laughs> I have a a um soldering iron over there was warming some stuff up okay so we've got our we've got our transformer we're going to see what happens when we plug it in no no, no just kidding all right there we go it's running fine That's just a little stiff. But again, that motor is rated rated for 100 volts. We're, we're really there's not a lot we're going to be able to do with that here. But isn't that awesome? Isn't those numbers awesome? The red on, the red, the white on red. I always like to see where, where Japan is is on these numbers, and it's, this is your typical 00, zero Japan. But look how good quality and clean. This thing's clean as a whistle. All right. These 225s, I found, were, they're often they're sealed very well against the elements. That's the cool, cool thing about them. Now a lot, a lot of times still over there's some brown glue in there and that's to glue this in here to get this out if you want to clean this which we will you've got to flip this up a little bit and this this will pull out but they've glued that all right well probably showed you more than you want to see there'll be more coming about this little escapade we'll see what we can do with all this and uh, maybe it'll be more interesting Thanks for taking the time.